So, it's my pleasure to introduce John Fogel, how to get better mileage out of blade. <laughs> Once you have it, uh, I noticed that most people uh, stop using Glade at this stage um, because they can no longer use their custom widget in, for their UI. So they, in the best case, they develop all the components with Glade, but then the main UI is uh, done programmatically. That's what I'm trying to change. So after the talk, if you have, if you are in that situation, please come to me, talk to me, and we can work out something in the following days, and so I can probably help you creating your custom, using your custom widget. So to do that, what you have to do is create a custom catalog. So the pros are quite obvious. It's easier than writing XML by hand. And also, as a good side story, it's a good way to test your widget while you develop. Uh, you will find that uh, play exercise your API uh, in a different way that you do manually. So for example, if you create a class with a property that its default value is null, and you never set it to no, you might never realize that your class crashes when you set it to no. But if you use Glade, there's a good chance you're gonna see that. <laughs> he corrected that several times. <laughs> he knows that's true. Uh, so what are the comments? So you have to write, manually write a catalog, which is an XML file. And if you happen to have a really complex widget, like a new container type, you will have to add some support code for Glade to know how to deal with the new uh, container. Uh, but if all you are doing is uh, creating regular composite widget, we are a collection <coughs> of GTK widget, uh, it should be pretty straightforward. So 
house uh, the catalog looks like. The next XML, the main tag is the clay catalog. You have to spell the name. You need to specify which library uh, you to load and which other catalog is the main. So in this case, uh, you probably going to depend on But it's basically you can specify which init function to call when the library is loaded. You might need it to do some specific setup uh, for your library, but that's not important right now. Uh, so the most important thing is the widget classes you try to introduce into Blade with this catalog, and the entries are quite simple for. Cases. So you have the play widget class, which needs a name, and that's the class name. Uh, generic name is the it's just a name for Glay to give to your new object. Uh, so it could be anything you want. And title is the string that you're gonna see in the UI in several places. So for example, in, in this uh, here. Uh, class named custom box and custom entry and those two classes will be defined in the custom library. <coughs> then the next thing you need to do is create a group, a widget group, uh, and give it a title and that uh, widget group is something that's going to show up in the tool palette so you know uh, where to find your widget. And all you have to do is make a reference to which uh, classes you want in that group. You can create more than one group, but usually uh, one is enough. So once you created your catalog, where to put them? If you're going to integrate this with, the, with your uh, build system and you want to import and ship the, the catalog, for your library, for example, you have to install it in the Play UI uh, catalog build variable. And your plugin library should go into the modules there. For development, if you don't plan to ship and it's only something you use in your own, in your own app, there's two different environment variables, one for the catalog and one for Noyu. They both work like a regular path where you can put more than one path in the same screen. And an easier, even easier way for shot catalog, you can go into the preference dialog of UA and add any catalog path you want in the UI directly. But once you do that you have to restart UA to pick up new catalogs. So now let me go quickly through a real world example. Like a few months ago, I needed to use a WebKit in the custom widget I was working on. Uh, so I decided it was easier for me to write a simple catalog to have access to at least the basic uh, classes of WebKit, which would be the WebView, which is the main widget that displays the HTML content, and the Web Settings, which is something you use to configure different web views. So here we have the same basic structure where I set a name for the library and then the library, instead of writing my own library, I simply rely on the system library, which is installed by default in the system location where we already has access to. So we have to it and call it what is to shift dashboard. <coughs> and obviously it depends on shift and Here's the classes I was interested in. WebKit WebView is the main one. But if you try this module, you will notice that Clay complains that it can't find the WebKit WebView type. And that's because uh, Clay infers the get type function directly from the, from the class name. And unfortunately, WebKit doesn't follow the 
normal convention because uh, the k in WebKit is capital, but the function name doesn't have an underscore. So there's also an option where you can uh, define which is the get type function in this case. So that's all the special case I had to do to get the uh, WebKit working in Relay. And then I did the same for the WebKit setting, and obviously you don't have to forget to add them to some group, otherwise we won't see them in the, in the UI. But late rollouts will load if you already have it in the There are a lot of different features. Uh, you can disable and remove property. Let's say there's a property in your class that doesn't make sense for the user to change. You can disable it. Or if there's something that you want the user to change but you don't want it to be set on the runtime, you can also disable it for in the runtime. You can set defaults. A uh, lot of different things. If you have any questions, you can talk to me afterward. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to the second part. And I want to show you the new UI I've been working on. But first, let me show you quickly what the current UI looks like. And try to show you how we got to this UI. So for that, we're going to go back to the day of GTK2. Day two, so this was early 2000, and basically you have it was and also was ported from GTK one, so it was a, an extra port, and each component has its own window, like you can see over there the file, and the property editor and the widget tree were all their own uh, top level window, and each time you add, edit your UI, if you have like 10 different dialogues in your UI, you will have, you will get 10 different uh, windows uh, in the world, in your world. Okay? And that was pretty annoying to work with. And also, didn't have an Android. <laughs> so this is Lay 3 for GTK2. It's basically the same UI as Lay 2, but everything in a single top level. Uh, so that was quite an improvement. Here, this is GTK3. This is the same GTK3 for GTK3 uh, for GTK3. And also, when we merged uh, everything into one top level, there were a lot of people complaining and explaining why having different top levels was better. And that's why you can still conduct it. Okay. So, what are the late issues UI-wise? Uh, the first thing would be like there's not enough space for the inspector, so you cannot see much of the hierarchy there, and that means you don't also have uh, enough space for the property yet. But the most annoying thing usually is trying to find the class you're looking for in the <coughs> uh, icon change places when you resize. You add a new class and suddenly everything is in a different position, so you usually end up moving the pointer on top of the icon so you can tell which, uh, get a tooltip and tell which class it is. Uh, a lot of people suggested to add a search feature there, and I did, but instead of adding a search feature to search for the toolpad, I decided that it was easier to double click in the placeholder where you want it to uh, create a new widget, do a quick search, and create the widget. But, yeah, I'm really never told anyone much about this. Uh, so most people don't know this feature is in like since four years ago. I'm sorry. Uh, so how can we improve this? Okay, so let's take a step back and see we could do. Let's see for the sake of argument. Remove this. Take worry about that later. Move the inspector to its place so we can have more room for the properties. 
And if you do that, we get something like this, which is, I think, quite better. You have a lot of room for the inspector and the property editor. Then the next step will be to replace the old uh, menu bar and toolbar with a modern platform. So we can get more room and have more space for the work. And if we do that, the mock-up will be something like this. Okay, let me show you what I have for this. using this new UI to create the presentation to the scope before. So where you can get the new UI? It's in the Git repository of Clay. All you have to do is check out the modern UI branch and do a make install. And what's to do? One of the things I plan to work on is <coughs> create a script which will take introspection data and give you a basic play uh, catalog you can work on. Uh, I obviously also have to do some more UI polish. I'll try to make a level release this week so people can start. Uh, trying it, keep working on the UI, fix uh, all the major bugs, and see. And after that, I'll try to integrate that, merge that into the into Max. Thank you. Okay, questions? Can you please show us how to use a header bar in the applications you design? Okay, this header bar is full of stuff, so apparently you managed to add things to the header bar, but I would like to see uh, with the, the one you get when you add one from scratch. Yes, please. Just make a window and...
Yeah, I don't understand that. Yeah, uh, Can I also put buttons, buttons in the title? Like, like for instance, a GTK stack switcher? Yeah, like for instance, in GNOME music, you can switch between tracks and albums. Uh. Excellent. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, hi. Um, you can still do all this with the current UI. You don't need this UI. So, uh, about the catalogs um, feature, the so the main issue of a catalog is that it requires you to have a library uh, and it has to be installed in the system, which means that applications kind of, mm, it's a no-go for most of them, basically. Um, and composite widgets, uh, uh, templates are actually a very useful um, application feature. Uh, are there any plans to ensure that it's possible to basically create a catalog for an application instead of, or for your running binary, basically? Yes, uh, I have. So currently, uh, there are a bunch of uh, features in the catalog, and one of them is that you can create uh, a virtual property. You can define a new property in the catalog and say, will Anglade will happily create that uh, function for that property for you. Uh, and also there's a, a way to specify a parent. So you can, if we go back, you can define the class, uh, say my, it's an entry, it's a custom entry, and so all you have to do is set the parent to set the property tag, which is parent, and you choose which parent you want, like say another entry. And then define yourself all the properties in the package. That's kind of hard to do, so that's why I plan to do this script to read from uh, the gear <coughs> file and produce a catalog. And, but, and yeah, also I plan to do like, I have to think about it, but basically be able to specify a directory full of uh, template definition that we that we will load and you should be able to use that internally. Uh, that should be easy to do, but yeah, if you want uh, to be able to edit properties of the composite widget, uh, you either have to add it to the catalog or have a tool that adds it to the catalog, or I need to make a with the file. So, yeah. Compromise. Okay, got some formal. 